Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. And in this video, we are gonna define the concept of a mole, which is an important one, and then use the mole concept to calculate the mass in grams or the number of particles in a sample of material. All right, breaking it down as always, first thing we're gonna do is define what the heck a mole is in terms of Avogadro's number. Two, we are then going to define what is known as molar mass. And then three, we're gonna solve some problems involving the conversion of mass in grams, a mountain moles, and number of atoms of an element. All right, so first let's define what the heck a mole is. We're not talking about moles. We are not talking about the little furry creatures. We're talking about the SI unit for amount of substance, which you can abbreviate MOL. Save yourself a lot of time. Now, the number of particles in a mole has been experimentally determined in a number of ways. And that number of particles in exactly one mole of a pure substance is known as Avogadro's number. And that number is a big one because we're talking about atoms, which are really, really small particles. Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. It's huge. In standard notation, again, six followed by 23 zeros. Lots of atoms grouped together. So I'm going to come back to this image that you saw in the previous video, and I want you to think about and recognize that one mole of any substance is going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. That's how many things a mole groups together. Now, it's not really practical for me to ask you all to count out one mole of things because it's gonna take you a really, really long time to count to 6.02 times 10 to 23. So in the lab, we can also reference the amount of one mole of a substance based on what's called its molar mass. And that is the mass in grams of that substance. Now, it's important to note that molar mass is written units of grams per mole. And it's also important to know that the molar mass of an element is numerically equal to the atomic mass of the element in atomic mass units which is the mass you find on the periodic table. So I'm gonna come back to this image one more time. I'm giving you an example of one mole of carbon, one mole of sodium, and one mole of chlorine. It's important to keep in mind that even though they contain the same number of particles, their masses are different because those individual particles are different sizes. And these mass values that represent one mole of the substance can be found on the periodic table. So carbon. Boom! Molar mass 12.011 grams. Matches its formula mass in AMU. So carbon 12.011 grams per mole. Sodium 22.990 grams per mole. Chlorine 35.453 grams per mole. Now, it is important to watch out for those diatomic elements. Remember Brinkelhoff. Your diatomic elements, recall, are two of the exact same atom bonded together. And therefore, the molar mass of these elements are going to be double the mass of what you see on the periodic table. Which again is why you see in this image the molar mass of chlorine, which is diatomic, to be double the mass we see of chlorine on the periodic table. Periodic table, diatomic chlorine, twice the mass. Last thing to think about is to recognize that chemists can use molar mass as a conversion factor in chemical calculations. Now, I really like the image that you see on your screen. You've also got this in your notes, but the mole is sort of the bouncer of the chemistry world. In order to do a lot of the calculations that we're gonna do this year, you first have to convert to moles. And I encourage you to take a couple of moments and observe the different conversion factors that will get you to the different places you need to go. I encourage you to check out a couple of those guided practice problems to see how I use this to solve some of those calculations. Boom, and we are done for this video. Have a fantastic day.